All right, we're going to construct a grouped frequency distribution. So to start with, with this, um, we'll go ahead and give you some directions here. So it's kind of like a cookbook process. It's kind of nice. If you can read a recipe book, you can determine the class sizes for your frequency distribution. So you find the highest and lowest value first. Second step, find the range. Third step, select the number of classes you desire. And this could be anywhere from 5 to 20, but there's no rule, really set rule. You just want to make sure that you have everything uh, represented clearly. Um, in this case, we're going to use 6 in our example. Find the width by dividing the range by the number of classes and rounding up. So the width of each class, how wide it'll be. And select a starting point, usually your lower value or just any convenient number less than the lowest value. And then add the width to get the lower limit. So once you get the lower limit and then you also find the upper limit, um, you can then find what are called the boundaries. So let me show you what all that means. So here's our data. We have the height and inches of commonly grown herbs. So we have 18 inches, 20 inches, 18 inches, 18 inches, 24 inches, 10 inches, 15 inches, on down to set, you know, all, all the way down so that we find that our minimum here is seven. And unless I really made a mistake, my maximum is 36. Okay, and so I have those listed here. Okay, once you find your min and your max, and you can actually do this if you have like two or three hundred values, then it then it's advantageous to go to Excel, type them into Excel, and use the min max function in Excel to find that. Then your range would be your minimum or your maximum minus your minimum, which is 29. Okay, so that's kind of that is step one. Um, now, for choosing what, uh, how many classes, we're going to choose six for this data. And again, like I said before, um, you can pick anything from five to twenty classes. You just need to select enough classes to represent the data clearly. So in our case, 29 divided by 6 for our width, so the range divided by the number of classes, gives us 4.83 repeating. Then you round that value up to 5. Alright, so now we have our class width, which is 5. Then you select a starting point. In this case, our smallest value is 7, and so I'm going to use that starting point and add the width to get the lower limits of the next class. So I have the lower limits and upper limits shown, but you can see here, so we start with 7, then we add 5, and you get 12, then you add 5, you get 17, add 5, add 5, and you keep adding 5, on down until we have enough to cover our six classes. And so we have an extra one there. Okay, the upper classes are determined um, by subtracting one from the lower limit of your next class. So um, 11 came from 12 minus 1. 16 is 17 minus 1. 22, 21 is 22 minus 1, and on down the line until we get enough, until we get all six of our classes covered. And so there's our upper limits. Then it's just a matter of putting those together to get your class limits. So here's our class limits. Our lower limit is 7, and we're going to go to 11. Then we're going to go 12 to 16, 17 to 21. 22 to 26, 27 to 31, and 32 to 36. The key to class limits is they have to be mutually exclusive. In other words, there cannot be any overlap. Sometimes in textbooks you'll see um, 10 to 20 and 20 to 30. Well, the problem with this in statistics is where does 20 go? Does it go with this class or does it go with this class? So when we're setting up our our class limits, you have to make sure they're mutually exclusive. And by following the kind of cookbooky process I've established there, or that's been established, not by me, um, you get you get that to occur. All right. So we've got our class limits set. 
So the next thing to do is to set the class boundaries by subtracting, in this case, because uh, we're dealing with whole numbers, we're going to subtract 0.5 from each lower class limit and add 0.5 to each upper class limit. It would be slightly different if we were dealing with decimals. Like if you're doing tenths, you would subtract 0.05 from each lower limit and add 0.05 to each upper class limit. So this is what it looks like. So our class limits are on the left. I have them boxed there. Our class boundaries are on the right. And so if I kind of slide those up and maybe match them up a little bit, you can kind of see I've taken um, I've subtracted 0.5 from 7 to get 6.5, added 0.5 to 11, and you got 11.5. And so there's our class boundaries. And I just did that consecutively on the way, all the way down. 22 uh, minus 0.5 is 21.5. And, and on and on until we got all six of our classes covered. So once we're ready to do this, once we've set up our classes, it's now time to go ahead and set up our um, frequency distribution table. So I've got my class limits, I've got my data, I've got my class boundaries. You can kind of see all of those. It doesn't quite fit on here, but I'll, when we get to the bottom, I'll, we'll need it. And so what we'll do is we'll tally this information. So go back to go back to kindergarten a little bit when we used to tally how many teeth we lost and things like that. And from 7 to 11, um, let's do it in green here. So I'm going to mark them off and tally. So there's one 7. Um, I see a 10. So there's another tally mark. And that might be it. Yep, looks like it. Well, we can always come back. So now I'm going to tally 11.5 to 16.5, so 12 would be 1, um, 14 would be 1, um, and that does it. 17 to 21, and if I miss, like I say, if I miss one, oh, I missed one, there, I see a 15 now. So I'll go back, hit that, 15, so now we're up to three of them. It looks like we got a bunch of these between... 16.5 and 21.5. So we've got 18. We've got another 18. Let's just get rid of all those 18s. 18. We've got another 18. Um, another 18. And look at there, I found two 16s. So I'll go back to blue here. And so there's a 16 and there's a 16. That's two more tallies here. And uh, I guess I should have crossed for five, but that's all right. And then we go to um, our 20s. They fit in there. So those are red. So 20, there's another tally mark. And here's one, two, three, four. We got that one added. And another 20, so we'll add that one. And another 20, we'll add that one and another 20 and we'll add that one and then we've got a 36 and a 24 so if we go in here um, 36 and a 24 so that means we've got one that goes here and a 36 we're going to skip that class because there aren't any in there and we'll go there all right so the next thing was we'll go ahead and tally our frequency convert those to numbers and so our frequency looks like we've got 2 between 6.5 and 11.5, and that accumulates to uh, 2. We've got uh, 5 of them here, so now we've got 7. We've got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of them here, so now we're up to 16. We've got 1 here, so we're up to 17, and 1 here. We're up to 18, and I think I might be missing one, so I'm going to pause and go check. All right, I only have 15 minutes, so I wanted to make sure I got this all in. But I missed, if you can see up there, there are two 24s, and I was getting in a hurry, and that's what happens when you get in a hurry. But uh, both of these should, should have checked out of the 24 region. 
And so back to our 24 where those would fit, there's actually two of those. So I'll put another tally. Make that a two. Okay. And so that changes our cumulative frequency distribution here. And so now we're up to 18 and then that's 19. And then we're done. Um, the hardest part of this is, is getting your, from the data, getting your class limits and class boundaries. All the rest of it is very easy. The next step is to make a histogram out of this data. So we have something more visual. Numbers are too abstract for most people to, to, to visualize. So uh, the next video will be how to make a histogram out of this data. So good luck and uh, hope this helps.